Welcome back to Iron Cloud Words Podcast. I'm Nick Masmanian. So the show is going to be adding on a, a uh, additional module. It's going to be on a different playlist. It's not going to be a part of the show all the time. But it's going to be called Bad Audio Books. Bad Audio Books are essentially me reading a book in funny voices or in a bad way, kind of lampooning or having fun with, not really lampooning, but just having fun with a book. I find that a lot of times audiobook readers, while some of them are really, really good, a lot of times they try to do things that just seem odd or funny, unintentionally funny, and I feel like that's a, that's something we could play with. So I'm going to be starting with the Brothers Grimm because each story is about 15 minutes to read, so they're very short usually. Good amount of time to listen to for on a coffee break or wherever you want and hopefully you're laughing along with me as I'm reading these books as I'm doing funny voices because I like doing funny voices they're funny and fun and other humorous words <laughs> I can't think of right now uh, without further ado we're going to be reading the Brothers Grimm the Frog King in old times when wishing still helped one there lived a king whose daughters were all beautiful but the youngest was so beautiful that the sun itself, which has seen so much, was astonished whenever it shone on her face. Close by the king's castle lay a great dark forest, and under a old lime tree in the forest was a well, and when the day was very warm, the king's daughter, the king's child, not daughter, bleh, it's a child, went out into the forest and sat down by the side of the cool fountain. And when she was dull, she took out a golden ball, and threw it up on high, and caught it. And this ball was her favorite plaything. Now it so happened, that on one occasion, the princess's golden ball did not fall into the little hand, which she was holding up for it, but on to the ground beyond, and rolled straight into the water. The king's daughter followed it with her eyes, but it vanished, and the well was deep so deep that the bottom could not be seen. On this she began to cry, and cried louder and louder, and could not be comforted. And as she thus lamented, some one said to her, What ails thee, king's daughter? Thou weepest so that even a stone might show pity. She looked around to the side from whence the voice came, and saw a frog stretching out it. She, she, yeah. Damn you, mid Ugh, damn you, old-timey writing. She looked around to the side, from whence the voice came, and saw a frog stretching forth its thick, ugly head from the water. Ah, old water splasher, is it thou? She said. I am weeping for my golden ball, which has fallen into the well. Be quiet, and do not weep, answered the frog. I can help thee, but what... Wilt thou give me if I bring thy plaything up again? Whatever thou wilt have, dear frog, said she, my clothes, my pearls, and jewels, and even the golden crown which I am wearing. The frog answered, I do not care for thy clothes, thy pearls and jewels, or thy crown. But if thou wilt love me, and let me be thy companion, and play fellow, and sit by thee at lay at thy little table, and eat off thy little golden plate, and drink out of thy little cup, and sleep in thy little bed, if thou wilt Promise me this, I will go below, and bring thy golden ball up again. Oh, yes, she said. I promise thee all thou wishest, if thou wilt bring me my ball back up again. She, however, thought, How silly this frog does talk. He lives in the water, with the other frogs, and croaks, and can be no companion to any human being. But the frog, when he had received this promise, put his head into the water and sank down, and in a short while came swimming up again, with the ball in his mouth. 
and threw it on the grass. The king's daughter was delighted to see her pretty plaything once more, and picked it up and ran away with it. Wait, wait, said the frog. Take me with thee. I can't run as thou canst. But what did it avail to him to scream, his croak, croak, after her, as loudly as he could? She did not listen, but ran home and soon forgot the poor frog, who was forced to go back into his well again. The next day, when she had seated herself at the table, there's no the there, it's just at table. Old German, didn't translate into Old English. Ah! The next day, when she had seated herself at table with the king and all the couriers, and was eating from her little golden plate, something came creeping, splish splash, splish splash, up the marble staircase, and when it had got to the top, it knocked at the door and cried, Princess! Youngest princess, open the door for me! She ran to see who was outside, but when she opened the door, there sat the frog in front of it. Then she slammed the door to. In great haste, she sat. There's no she. Ugh. Then she slammed the door to. In great haste, sat down to dinner again, and was quite frightened. The king saw plainly that her heart was beating violently, and said, My child, what art thou so afraid of? Is there perchance a giant outside who wishes to carry thee away? Oh no, she replied. It is no giant but a disgusting frog. What does a frog want with thee? Oh, dear father, yesterday as I was in the forest, sitting by the well, playing with my golden ball, fell into the water. And because I cried so, the frog brought it out again for me. And because he insisted on it, I promised him he should be my companion. But I never thought he would be able to come out of his water. And now he is outside there and he wants to come in to me. Phrasing. In the meantime, it knocked a second time and cried, Princess, youngest princess, open the door for me. Dost thou not know what thou saidest to me yesterday by the cool waters of the fountain? Princess, youngest princess, open the door for me. Then the king said, That which thou hast promised must thou perform. Go and let him in. She went and opened the door, and the frog hopped in and followed her step by step to her chair. There he sat and cried, Lift me beside thee! She delayed, until at last the king commanded her to do it. When the frog was once on the chair, he wanted to be on the table. And when he was on the table, he said, Now push thy little golden plate nearer to me, that we may eat together. She did this, but it was easy to see that she did not do it willingly. The frog enjoyed what he ate, but almost every mouthful she took choked her. At length, he said, I have eaten and are now satisfied. I am now tired. Carry me into thy little room and make thee thy little silken bed ready, and we will both lie down and go to sleep. The king's daughter cr began to cry, for she was afraid of the cold frog, which she did not like to touch, and which was now to sleep in her pretty clean little bed. But the king grew angry and said, He who helped thee, when thou weren't in trouble, ought not afterwards be despised by thee. So she took hold of the frog with two fingers, carried him upstairs, and put him in a corner. But when she was in bed, he crept to her and said, I am tired. I want to sleep as well as thou. Lift me up, or I will tell thy father. Then she was terribly angry, and took him, and threw him with all of her might against the wall. Now, 
Thou wilt be quiet, odious frog, she said. But when he fell down, he was no frog, but a king's son, with beautiful, kind eyes. He, by her father's will, was now her dear companion and husband. Then he told her how he had been bewitched by a wicked witch, and how no one could have delivered him from the well but herself, and that tomorrow they would go together into his kingdom. Then they went to sleep, and next morning, when the sun woke them, then they went to sleep, and next morning, when the sun woke them, a carriage came driving up with eight white horses, which had eight white ostrich feathers on their heads, and were harnessed with golden chains, and behind stood the young king's servant, Faithful Henry. Faithful Henry had been so unhappy when his master was changed into a frog that he had caused three iron bands to be laid around his heart, lest it should burst with grief and sadness. The carriage was to conduct the young king into his kingdom. Faithful Henry helped them both in and placed himself behind again and was full of joy because of this deliverance. And when they had driven a part of the way, the king's son heard a cracking behind him, as if something had broken. So he turned around and cried, Henry, the carriage is breaking! No, master, it is not the carriage. It is a band from my heart, which was put there in my great pain when you were a frog and imprisoned in the well. Again and once again, while they were on their way, something cracked and each time the king's son thought the carriage was breaking, but it was only the bands that were springing from the heart of faithful Henry, because his master was set free and was happy. And what the hell did I just read? So there you have it, guys. This is the Brothers Grimm first first story about the frog. I don't know if it's the frog prince per se. Like the one I remember is the girl has to kiss him, and that makes him a, and that makes him a human. But man, is it weird. Like, I've never actually... I've read some of the Brothers Grimm, and I know for sure the ones that have been laundered for kids to uh, to essentially have, you know, not creepy things happening to them. Like, oh my god. The dude's... You must put, you must cater to the frog that helped you with your favorite plaything. Also, by the way, I'm so glad we evolved away from massive comma sentences. Like, there were at least three sentences in most of the sentences that I was reading. So I'm hoping I can get these up at least, at the very minimum, it's once a week. At the best, it's going to hopefully be either three times a week or maybe even daily. Who knows? But that's when we get there. I just hope that people enjoy it. And the only way I know you enjoy it is by you telling me. So either on Twitter, you can reach out to me at BLT Runner, or by, uh, by you know leaving comments below or sharing it. Just, just seeing some kind of feedback helps me know what I'm doing is good. And that you enjoy it. So, and frankly, I'm making this for everybody to like and enjoy. Like, I hope you like it because, you know, I enjoy making them. And frankly, I, I hope it's something you like. So, anyway, I hope you guys have a good day. It's a nice day outside. And uh, every day, learn something new. Try something fun. Do something you normally wouldn't do. Because frankly, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Have a good day, everybody.